you spoke, you know, about the way helping people to guide, um, to confront kind of difficult material, moving towards it, jumping into the anaconda's mouth. You also write about um, this exercise of imagining their mind is like they have a basement in their mind and they have to go into it. You know, is that something yeah. you still incorporate? Yeah, that's usually a part of our session preparation or what has come to be called the final flight instructions <laughs> the day before, you know. But uh, we often say, like, hey, imagine going down into the basement of your life with a bright searchlight and, you know, your therapist is beside you. But the attitude is, I'm coming down. And if there's anything down here that's causing me depression or anxiety or uh, making me inhibiting my fullness of living, darn it, I want to see what it is, you know? And so you go down and you shine your light in the darkest corners you can find, you know? And if there's some monster or dragon or boogeyman or whatever it is down there, you look it straight in the eye and you say, well, hello, you know, are you ever scary? Uh, what are you doing in my mind? You know, this is my mind after all, darn it. I've got a right to know, you know, you know, uh, what are you doing generating depression down here? You know, uh, what are you made up of? You know, and as you approach it, there's always the transformation of, of the symbol. You know, the, the monster becomes uh, your father when he was drunk in the middle of the night when you were a kid, or it becomes the abusive babysitter, or, you know, it becomes a, a condensed symbolism of your self-doubts, or whatever it is. But as you go towards it, you tame it and even befriend it. So it becomes sort of like a kid with a Halloween mask, you know? There's a cute little kid behind the ugly mask, you know? And you can really like him and give him a piece of candy. You can relate to him. He's part of you, you know? And when that happens, the insights flood in, the fears get conquered, really. So what was terrifying one minute might be funny the next. You might have the best laugh you've had in a long time. But that only happens if you have this intention of not running away from anything, of diving in, of experiencing. And that takes a lot of trust, you know? Yeah. And that's why we don't just give someone a psychedelic and say, here's a drug, tell us what happens, you know? Because they may well uh, experience uh, panic, paranoia, confusion, which is not helpful, you know? Right. But that's not because of the drug, it's because they're not prepared and supported in uh, navigating within the states of consciousness that are opening up. Right. Yeah, I feel like it's it's really um, fortuitous that um, it's you know you you really can trust in this because because when whenever you do approach that material, you're right, it always changes. It never if there's a boogeyman in your mind and you approach it, it won't just stand there as a boogeyman for the next hour. There will always be some insight as to what's behind it, and ultimately, there's always just pain or something that's not not actually to be feared. You know, you, as you say, it could be your father's kind of violent behavior and then behind that you see their own trauma and then you end up having sympathy and you feel bonded to them and suddenly you're in a place of universal acceptance and love and you've transcended all of this fear and um yeah all it takes it sounds simple to say that's all it takes but it, as you say it, it takes a level of commitment and bravery i guess to do that courage and trust and it's a lot of trust because the these transitions in consciousness, especially if dosage is high enough to facilitate these transcendental states, uh, they, it often feels as though you're dying or going crazy, totally losing control. 
and uh, if you don't, if you're not prepared for that, you know, my therapist told me I might feel as though I'm dying, but he reassured me that my, my heart will keep beating and my lungs will keep breathing and I'll be fine. And after death always comes rebirth, you know, so I can allow it to happen. Or if I think, uh, my gosh, this is what schizophrenics must experience. My gosh, I'll never get back to normal, you know. Well, it's different from usual, but explore it. This is a unique opportunity. You're going to be okay. You will come back as, with all these memories and experiences and insights. But, but to trust that uh, takes, I like to emphasize the importance of the decision to trust. You know, that it's not just being passive and open. You know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I think of that like lying on a pavement as a steamroller approaches. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not just being passive. It's choosing to be totally open and trust as much as you can. Yeah. And to be grounded in the relationship with someone who's there with you. Yeah. Right. Even if you may not talk to them all day or need them, you know they're there. You yeah, know? I think that's also nice. It, it kind of resonates with the kind of idea of the kind of hero's journey. You know, you this is an opportunity for you to be the the hero of your your own. You know, you, whatever your psychological story is, the things that are most important to you, you can be the one to go in and conquer these things. As, as you say, instead of being passive, you can just. And, and I think that's the other thing is all of these things are just part of your mind. They belong to you, ultimately. They're your demons, you know, they're... So that's another reason why they shouldn't be feared. You know, you're going to be living fundamentally divided unless you learn to confront and integrate these things. My own favorite demon. It's like my favorite stuff toy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've definitely heard... Um, I don't have to fear it, you know? Yeah, I think it was actually a talk from Ramdas, Richard Alper, who, yeah, made this point in... Um, in after his many years of spiritual practice saying how his his neuroses didn't go away but they just his relationship to them fundamentally changed so it was he was no longer ruled by them but instead it was like ah jealousy there you are good to see you again you know all of these things just kind of yeah um but so so these kinds of experiences um i guess we can we could talk about uh you know with with psychedelic therapy you might have a relatively high dose and have a mystical experience but then if you want to target kind of working through traumas, people often go with what's called psycholytic therapy, right? Where you use a slightly lower dose. Right. And I'm glad you bring that up because fascinating and important is the transcendental experiences are, you know, as, and especially for religious scholarship. When, when that community finally wakes up to this frontier, you know, there's, I don't know why they're having so much trouble waking up, you know. Uh, actually, there's a, a new book coming out at the end of this month, uh, The Immortality Key by Brian Murarescu, which uh, argues in a very scholarly way that the early uh, Christian sacrament indeed was a psychedelic substance. Uh, so that'll be very interesting. Uh, to what extent that uh, gets explored and critiqued and pursued, you know. Uh, but there are these experiences that are not religious, not spiritual, as we usually use those terms, but are really uh, in line with conventional psychotherapy, you know, dealing with uh, guilt and grief and anger and jealousy and um, interpersonal relationships. And those experiences are incredibly valuable as well. You know, maybe they're not entheogenic, but they're psychedelic, they're mind manifesting. And uh, when the day comes when these drugs are legally uh, prescribable, and we can use them in therapy, which I hope is coming fairly soon. Uh, 
the mental health provider may choose low dosage some days and high dose other days, you know, that they're both uh, valuable realms to explore. And actually some high dose sessions do include both. Uh, sometimes uh, in the journey towards transcendence, you go through some psychodynamic material and on the way back to earth, if you will, afterwards, you deal with uh, um, personal uh, and interpersonal dynamics. Um, but uh, there, both realms are incredibly valuable.